No, I don't think so. I don't walk around going, rada, 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 rada. See, the character only says rada over and over again. Rada, rada, where'd they go? Rada, rada, rada. Please welcome to the stage the one, the only, John DiMaggio. Here you go. Welcome aboard. Thank you. How you doing, you guys? What's happening? How are you doing? Nice. You got it pegged. I love, I love the accent. No, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, totally. Going out, going to Permanis. Get some, it's a hard accent to, to get. It's really difficult, this accent, but yeah. I, I flew last night from, from Boston to Pittsburgh um, boy, those two accents couldn't be further <laughs> from each other, like competing, competing uh, chalkboard scratching, if you will. Just you got, you know, because you got one guy over here talking like this, Joe. I swear, Patriots, Joe. And then you got, yeah, everybody's just. You guys are very friendly, but really angry deep down. It's awesome <laughs> how, you, how you mask all that anger. It's really something. It's fantastic. 466 fucking bridges, boy, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's all right. Um, it's, I'm glad to be here. It's my first time in Pittsburgh, so thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And you guys have been very kind. Been, like giving me gifts at the, at the table and stuff. I'm like, I can't, what? Oh, wow, you guys are awesome. Arts and crafts. Yes. So it is awesome having you here. Thank you very much. And where, where are you from, by the way? Well, I grew up in Jersey, so that's, I, grew, I grew up about 45 minutes outside of the city. So, you know, I heard plenty of people kind of talking like this down in South Jersey, you know. It's a, it's a very specific kind of accent that floats through the, the New Jersey, Pennsylvania area and into Delaware. It's pretty awesome. And then further south into Maryland, it's kind of this weird mid-Atlantic thing. It's beautiful. I love it. I love hearing that stuff. As much as I poke fun at it, it for me, it's just, I, I love to hear the sound of it, uh, just of various people. It's something that a speech teacher told me to do all the time is just to to listen for those voices because you can use that. You put it in the back of your head and go, oh, I, that's an interesting character, you know, because everybody, you know, growing up outside of New York, everybody heard the guy that, you know, everybody heard the guy that sounds like this over here, you know what I mean? And, and you know, people are wearing uh, the robot hats, you know, that's kind of, you know, there's a guy, you know, you hear this guy and scares the hell out of you. But then you're just like, but that's a real guy. And like, <laughs> you can do that in a cartoon and people are like, that voice scares the hell out of me. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, Jersey, Jersey, it's all good. Yeah. How old were you when you first start? You could figure out how to mimic voices. Um, I've always been playing like that. I always enjoyed playing creatively like that. And I started doing theater when I was like, I was like nine. And then I did it academically for, for many years, graduated, I mean, it didn't graduate, I didn't graduate from Rutgers, but I went to the, to the theater school there and then continued on. But I've, yeah, it's been a, it's been a passion of mine for a long time, ever, ever since I could remember, so, yeah. Did you have any, like, uh, heroes that were voice actors growing well, up? You, mostly it was all Cartoon. comedians. It was all comics. It was all, uh, I loved Robin Williams and Steve Martin. Mm -hmm and Richard Pryor, and George Carlin. George Carlin, I don't know how often I listen to Class Clown, that album, it goes <laughs> over and over and over again, you know, just, you know. And, and, and hearing the way he spoke, spoke to me, so it was kind of, yeah, it's kind of cool. I, yeah, but, but those guys were really, Billy Crystal too, Billy Crystal was huge, I loved Billy Crystal, because he, he did so many great, like, impressions of people that, Normally, you wouldn't hear yeah. impressions of Cosell. He was he would do Cosell and Ali together. There's this one great thing he does. It was an old bit that he did, and it was him doing doing uh, uh, Howard Cosell, Muhammad Ali, and Leon Spinks. <laughs> and his Leon Spinks is one of the funniest things you'll ever hear. I like eggs. And I don't know if you guys know yeah. right. Leon Spinks. He had about three teeth. <laughs> anyway, yeah, but. Yeah, but I love those guys. Those guys, those guys are the ones that influenced me the most. 
What about any cartoon voice actors like Daz Butler or Mel Blanc? No, I never. I mean, of course, everybody loved Mel Blanc. Everybody knew who Mel Blanc was, you know, because of all the Bugs Bunny stuff. And I loved all that Bugs Bunny stuff. That was the stuff. That was that was it. Um, but then, you know, you get all sorts of other people, and you start to hear people, you know, it, you know, and you go, "Oh my God, that that was Scatman Crothers," you know, <laughs> you know, doing you know Hong Kong Fooey, like you know, like. Um, but it's weird. It was weird to be in the booth. Like the, I remember the first time I did Scooby Doo. Um, you know, I pl I pl I, pl I played uh, one of the villains that you thought was a villain, but wasn't the main villain. I was a bad guy, but I didn't get to say you know if it wasn't for you meddling kids. <laughs> I, I eventually got to say that you know over the years, but um, but yeah, but but I mean I'm sitting in the room. And I have, uh, you know, I, I got, it, it's um, Fr Fred, uh, Jesus, I can't remember, his name escapes me. And the guy playing Freddy, Fr Frank Welker. I've got Frank Welker, I've got oh. Casey Kasem, I've got uh, uh, Great Lyle, I've got, uh, uh, the, I think at the time it was the, the um, who was playing Velma? It was uh, Mindy Cohn oh. from, you know, Facts of Life, yeah. like, um, and I'm sitting there, and we're doing it, you know, round in the, in the round in the in the recording booth. And I was, I just wish I had a bowl of cereal. I was like, this is insane. <laughs> like this is like Saturday mornings <laughs> happening right in front of my face. It's been pretty cool. Like those those moments, they happen, and you're like, wow, you know. And then you think about guys like Frank Welker, and you know, I grew up listening to him. We all did, and he sounds exactly the same as Freddie to this day. Like it's unbelievable. <laughs> so. I mean, you, you, you don't know who your heroes are until they all of a sudden are right in your face and you're like, oh, oh, wow, you know. My peers, I have some wonderful people that I work with that I, you know, I, I cherish their friendships and, and, and they're very important people in this industry, which is just a trip. It's just wild. So how some of this process works, are you shown a picture of the character and said, what do you think this character sounds like, yeah, or the, do you base a voice on it? I mean, they basically what they do is they give you the picture of the character, they tell you, they, there's usually a character bible, which is just basically like tells you where he's from, what he's about, how, what, what, where he lies within the story, anything that we need to know if there's backstory, or if you're free to make that stuff up yourself and make, you know, make him you know, however you want to in your eyes, you know, everybody has their own interpretation. All depends on the direction, um, you know, but, but yeah, like the, you, you go with that. You go with visually what it looks like and where the character's coming from emotionally and you kind of, you throw it into a pot and you kind of mix it together and you, and, you, and you play around with it and you start with one thing and sometimes you start with one thing and end up with a completely different thing, but that's okay because you found it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. You know, um, I, used to have a t I used to have a teacher in college. They used to walk around. We were, we, it was movement class. We were learning how to do all kinds of, and we were like in tights and ballet shoes and all kinds of, imagine me walking around in tights. Hell. Um, anyway, but like there was, a, there was a teacher that used to go, there's no right or wrong here. There's no right or wrong here. There's no right or wrong here. One morning she came up to me, she was like, John, what you're doing is wrong. <laughs> you have, um, I swear to God, fucking true story, terrible. Um, but there's something to be said about that when you're trying to find a character and when you're trying to shape something. So anything, you can, just as long as you throw it at the wall as hard as you can, you know, you commit to it, you know, you can dial it down and whatever, but, you know, just, just be, be free with it when you're trying to figure out what the character is. And then, you know, and sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. It's all right. Do you record your voice practicing and saying, oh, I like Oh, the never. Way nah. That, just, that's all just private time goofing off, sitting in the car, you know, or staring in the mirror or, uh, uh, you know, you're alone and you're just sitting around, nothing to do. And then <laughs> and you're like, oh, OK, there's something, you know. And then you start making that noise and you're like, wait a minute, this sounds like a stomach. Remember when you, know, you, ever, you ever sit there and you're just like, oh man, my stomach. What did I eat? What's going on? Wow. You know, you're like, hey, what, what just happened in there? You know, just stupid little things like that. I taught myself how to whistle with my fingers. Um, you know, I taught myself how to do that driving around in a car. I was just nothing. It was just like, I was like, 
Yeah, no, I go, yeah, I can get, I can get a cab. She's like, you could call a cab. I'm like, yeah, I can. You can't go like this. <laughs> it's not going to work. Um, but yeah, no, it's all play. It's all play. And if you structure it right and you chronicle it, you have this plethora of things to choose from in your, in your, you know, in your grab bag when you're trying to you know, come up with something. You know, any idea is a good idea as long as you remember it. <laughs> it's true. So I got one more question, then we're going to open it up to the audience. If anyone has a question on this side of the room, please line up right where Kyle is. Anybody have a question on this side of the room, line up over there, and I'll get you. And while they're lining up, I, we do have some water there for you if oh, you thanks. need any. I appreciate it. And I just have one more question, and have you ever tried bacon pancakes? Uh, no, because I, I don't want to. I don't want to go into a diabetic shock <laughs> and, from <laughs> bacon pancakes. Although I know how I'd make them. Oh, really? Yes. First of all, you gotta take. You gotta have really good bacon. It's gotta be good, like either like uh, uh, like Vermont bacon, like real, like you know the kind that you see in the butcher shop. <laughs> where it's just sitting there, that kind of bacon, right? You did that bacon, you fry it up in a pan, but, you, but, but you, you chop it into little bits, right? You chop it into little bits, and then you get it going, you, and, you, and you get it all nice and just, just about crispy, just about crispy, and, and, then, and then you take it all out, you drain it, and then with that grease you use to do the pancakes, you get the pancake batter, and you put the already cooked bacon in the pancake batter, and then you do it in the bacon grease on a skillet. That's how you do it. You don't do it any other way. You don't put like two pieces of bacon on the pancake, bacon pancake. Nope, that's not it. Nope, doesn't cut it. Sorry, not gonna do it. I've had people send me some funky pictures like, I made bacon pancakes. It's like, no you didn't, you made me throw up in my mouth. <laughs> That's nasty. I don't know what kind of, you know, especially English fans. They're like, I got it right here. It's my bacon. It's terrible. It's like a piece of raw ham. You're like, God, what did you do? I made bacon pancakes, love. Don't you want some? Then you feel bad. You're like, oh, no. Okay, I'll eat it. Oh, God. No, it's good. Do you have any HP sauce? Okay, cool. No, that's all right. Nobody got that HP reference, the English condiment. Doesn't matter. It's all right. Heinz makes it for crying out loud. You guys don't know what that is? Everybody's like, yeah, we like Heinz. What's the matter? God. HP. What, what, is the, what does the HP stand for? I forget. <laughs> what is it like? Heinz, please. Is it a red sauce, a white sauce? No, a it's, a, it's, like, a, it's like, a, like a Heinz 57 sauce, but it's HP sauce. I don't know. Maybe it's a competing sauce. Maybe it's not Heinz. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what happened? Everybody's staring at me like, <laughs> you bastard. HP sauce will get you. Everybody's Googling HP sauce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah, that's you it. Bring it over to his table. He'll sign it. Yeah, that, yeah, I will. I will sign some HP sauce. Let's get to some questions over there. Yes. That's awesome. All right. Our first question. Your name and your question. Hi, my name's Eric, and you were talking about all the iconic voice actors of the late 20th century, Frank Welker, all those people. How does it feel knowing your name is now mentioned with those people as a, such an icon in the voice acting world? Can you work for my PR department, bro? <laughs> wow. Uh, thank you so much. That's very kind of you to say that. Um, but, you know, it's pretty wild because... Sure. Yeah, I, um, I, I love the job. So to be mentioned in the, you know, with those people is pretty, pretty cool. I mean, the, the movie that I, that I executive produced, I Know That Voice, like kind of, you know, it, it, it showed a light on people in the voiceover industry. And I was able to talk to, you know, a lot of those folks, you know, and it's pretty special. It's pretty cool. I, I, I'm pretty blown away by it. Um, and it's a wonderful company of people to be, you know, be with, you know, be mentioned in the same, you know, breath as them. So, yeah, it's a trip. It's a trip. It's wild. I, it's something I never thought would happen. Awesome. Next question. My name is Max. and uh, Hi, Max. I know you voice so many cartoon characters, but who was your favorite cartoon character you voice in Futurama? Um, 
we, we didn't hear that name. I'm sorry. Um, there was interference. Um, no, I heard him. It's all good. Flexo. That's a different one, right? Over to this side of the room. Got a couple questions right here. Yeah. You've worked with Katie Seagal. So yeah, let's, she's, let's, she's coming here this weekend. Right. Anybody got any Futurama merch? That's the unicorn. Oh, my God. So we want to hear a story about Katie. I call her, um, I call her an asshole all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's the way I do it that it always gets her. Because I'll do it when she doesn't know I'm in the room. And I'll just, Katie. You're an asshole. <laughs> She'll just be like, oh my God, hi. So yeah, that's one, that's, yeah, that's a little secret. That's a little secret. It always makes her laugh too, because it's a, because it's Randy. It's Randy from Futurama, you know, just like, the robot has to go. <laughs> You're an asshole. It's the same guy. So yeah, so that's my, yeah, that's a, that's an, that's an insider joke. But don't go calling her an asshole when she shows up tomorrow, for Christ's sakes. John said to call you an asshole. No, I didn't. I did not. Everything here is off the record today, for crying out loud. Anyway, go ahead. Next question. Hi, John. I'm Joe. Hi, Joe. How you doing? Um, since we're at a celebration of pop culture, you know, comic books and animation and TV shows, I just wanted to know, uh, what was your introduction to pop culture as a kid? Well, I mean... I remember the first comic books I had were the Marvel team-up. Spider-Man and the Marvel team, it was, it was, it was, he would do a Marvel team-up and he had, he teamed up with the cast of Saturday Night Live. Uh, the Not Ready for Prime Remember that one? Uh, the Not Ready for Primetime Plays it's, it's, had Belushi on the cover. Exactly, wow. exactly. And, uh, and, and they sent it to the to Rockefeller Center, but they were trying to be, get it sent to uh, J.B. Lushi and not John <laughs> Belushi. And it was the Silver Samurai. That was just, anyway, it was funny. It was a good, it was, yeah. So I love that shit. So, it, but like, I love that stuff. And, and uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy moderate amounts of science fiction, a moderate amount of horror. I'm not as hardcore, but it's so, I, what I love about cons is that people let their freak flag fly, like, proudly. And I am down with that, 100%. <laughs> Um, and, and, and so it's always cool to see people just having a good time and really allowed to, you know, express their love of, of, a, of a genre, you know, no matter what it is, it's, you know, it's, but it's usually here, you know, you know, there's always something for somebody. So that, that's kind of cool. I, I dig that. But I mean, as far as like the, the pop stuff, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm middle of the road, but I appreciate it. I have an, I have an interesting bird's eye view of what, you know, what's going on and what, what the zeitgeist is. So it's kind of cool. Yeah. Want to head over to the other side of the room for two questions and we'll bounce back here. Yes. Hi. Um, do you ever get sick and tired of people mentioning Futurama and Bender, like Futurama this, Futurama that, Bender this, Bender that, or is that like a show that, a character that you are very proud of? I, the more people talk about it, the better. Uh, the more people talk about it, the, the, the more money I'm liable to make off that guy. So uh, the more, yeah, the more it's, uh, the more it's yapped about, the, the happier I am. I, I love it. You know, <clears throat> It's, it's, it's something to, to have a character that means so much to so many people. Um, and, you know, I, I, it's, you're lucky if you get the opportunity to have a catchphrase, you know? Um, Bite my shiny metal ass. I mean, who, that's, that's it. That's awesome. Like it's, you know, and people are like, will you say it or, you know, do it? It's like, yeah, I will, sure, no problem. But, you know, and, you know, Bacon pancakes, like there's so many like little things, you know, like with, with Jake or it doesn't matter what the character is. I don't care if you if you like it and you appreciate the work. This is the applause I get because I don't hear anybody going yay in the booth when I record it. There's no, you know, people are on the other side of the glass going, nice job, way to go. Every, you know, let's move on to the next thing and blah 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 blah. It's you know, it's it's work. But you know, when I come to a place like this and hear people applaud, that's that's I appreciate it. You know, and it's, I mean, being a guy who started out in theater, you know, 
who, who could ask for anything more, you know, than people uh, really appreciating something that you do. So I love it. I don't care. I don't care if they, listen, if you're going to be, you know, if we all know that there's annoying people in this world, right? But like, you know, it's all right. You know, if they ask me to say it seven times, it's, it's just the way it is. On the eighth time, I'm going to go, all right, <laughs> but that's fine. They'll be like, you did that in character. I'll be like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Get out of here, kid, you bother me. <laughs> you insulted me on the way out. Yeah, that's great. Okay, cool. It's like, it's unbelievable. Especially Bender, because you can say the worst shit to people. <laughs> it's awesome. It's so much fun. Yeah. All yeah. Right. All right. Next, next question, please, on that side of the room, and then we'll move back over here. Hi. Uh, Hi. My name's Colin. Hi, Colin. Um, I'm 14, so a lot of my younger years... Uh, I was watching Cartoon Network. A lot of his younger years. <laughs> a lot of his younger years, he was watching Cartoon like, Network, folks. Seven, eight. Seven, eight, sure. Yeah, no, that's, hey, man, that's half, half a lifetime ago for you, um, buddy. <laughs> that's a long time. That's serious. I, that's good math right there, huh? I was watching you on Cartoon Network, and I was just wondering if, um, since you voice a lot of characters, since you voiced a lot of characters for a long time, do you pick up, like, person? Traits or phrases or something. Or Do I like pick that? up personality traits from the characters that I portray during yeah, my daily like life? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, anytime I have a hard night at the bar, that's sure. That's a that's a bender moment for myself that I that I'm not really proud of. <laughs> but uh, I kind of gave that up because the wife, <clears throat> nah, she didn't play that. So, yeah. So so that's that story. But but. No, I don't think so. I don't walk around going rada 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 See, the character only says rada over and over again. Rada rada. Where'd they go? Rada rada rada. Dude, ask the question and split. See you later, fourteen. All right. Let's head over to this side of the room. There you go. Here we go. There we go. Hello. Hi. Uh, my name is David. How you doing, David? Good, good. How are you? All right. It's good to hear. Um, so, I don't know if you remember me. I was, um, I was at Awesome Con in 2016. I saw you there with Phil Lamar and Billy West. Phil Lamar. Was, uh, Phil Lamar. It's actually my first uh, panel ever that I went to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Nice. Thanks. I like that, too. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, I was just wondering. I mean, obviously, you voice so many iconic characters, but, like, which like character, character's personality, like you think personally, like like suits you best? Like, what do you think, like, is like? What, what character are you? Like, okay, sure. In your um, own skin. No, when I uh, well, there, there's okay. what's lovely is that in all the characters, there's a little bit of me. So, you know, I mean, Bender is every time I want to say what I really want to say, what's on my mind, Jake. Jake, that voice of Jake the dog is like my voice, but with a hug around it. That's the way I describe it. And so when I, you know, to be, to be kind and nice and thoughtful and caring, you know, that, that's the voice uh, that, that kind of comes out. Um, and then, I mean, there's other, but, but I mean, huh. Just stump the actor. <laughs> um... Yeah, but no, I mean, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. can't pick a favorite. That's fine. I think it's Bender, cause you know, who wants a beer? I mean, come on now, it's all good. B Bender, I'm sure. Bender. Right. Let's say it's Bender. Okay. It's Bender. Let's grab the next question over here. Hello, sir. I'm Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Hi. So, you've done voices in so many different video games over the years. Uh, ha has there been a game uh, that you've, you've done the voice for, you, you've seen the story, and you're like, man, I gotta play that. Uh, are you a gamer at all? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm such a narcissist that I only play the games that I'm in. <laughs> so... <laughs> no, I mean, but, but seriously, I'm a huge, huge fan of Gears of War. Um, which is great. I mean, I have a, hold on. I have a tattoo. That's got a tomato in it. Um, so yeah, so I, I love that game. Um, 
But I love like uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto, all the Grand Theft Autos, Red Dead Redemption. Um, I like, you know, shoot 'em up games and, and, and sports games. But I don't really get the chance to play them much anymore. So, you know, back in the day, you used to be able to get a new game and then play it the entire weekend and be like, I finished the game, man. Like, you know, 26 hours later, you know, but, but you know, it was fun. It, um, I love it. I love that stuff. But I, 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 you know, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for, a, for uh, Gears of War 6. So we'll see what happens. And keep my, who knows what they come up. The door is wide open for that one. So. Okay, another one from this side of the room. Got yes. a bit of a line here. Hi, uh, my name's Neely. Um, and I was wondering. Hi, Neely. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And I was wondering, do you ever like rant to yourself in the voices? Like, because my little brother one night walked in on me when I was just like ranting to myself in an Elmo voice. Like, I was, I was doing the rack, I was a rack speech, but there was an Elmo voice, and apparently the whole house heard me. Nice. Which was terrifying. No, yeah, no, because so you're crazy. You, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ever, crazy like, too. Do you no, ever, it's like, all right. Rent to yourself yeah, if you listen, I'm just successful enough to put my, um, you know, my crazy to use for crying out loud. My schizophrenia is paying off. <laughs> no, but like, when you, this is the thing. You have to be completely vulnerable in order to play. When you're trying to m make something up, create something. Um, and when somebody comes, comes in on you when you're doing something like that, it's like being seen naked. It's the same feeling in your head, like, you know, I'm completely vulnerable. Oh my God, I didn't want anybody to see me do that. But you have to be willing to do that to, to find those things. So shake it off, don't worry about it. It's your little brother anyway, he's a dork. <laughs> little brothers are dorks. Uh, I, was a, I was a little brother, I was a dork, it was a pain in the ass. Let's head over to the other side of the room. Got yes. two questions over there. Then we're going to finish up over here. Yes. Hi. Hi. I am, my name's Travis. Hi. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so nervous. I'm big. Oh, don't worry about it. Shake it off. Uh, so good. Do you feel like you have... I'm sorry. I'm not good at saying words. I'm... <laughs> Do you feel like you have completed everything you want to as a voice actor? Like, if you were to stop voice acting now, would you feel, like, complete? I still want to do Batman. I still, there's, there, I want to do Batman, but if I don't get to do Batman, I'm cool with that. Um, but I'd love to do Batman. I got the chance to play the Joker again, which was really cool. Um, I, I, boy, I really loved playing Aquaman in Batman Brave and the Bold. That was so much fun, and Diedrich did such a great job as Batman. It, it, it was interesting because I almost got Batman. It was between me and him for Batman on Batman Brave and the Bold, and Diedrich got it. And, and the, you know, the consolation prize was Aquaman, which I think was kind of more fun than Batman, you know what I mean? So, you know, I got to really play around with that. But, but I, it was funny because when we would record, and, and Diedrich, you know, I can do a Diedrich, I can do Diedrich's Batman pretty, pretty good. Um, in fact, I did it in Adventure Time. Um, I did a, I did Jake doing him as, you know, your, your treatment of the opposite sex makes me sick. <laughs> he would, you know, Joker, your, your dastardly deeds are done. He had a sort of adnoidal sort of a thing. And so I would do it in front of him and he'd be like, dude, man, come on. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, we have the same agent. I'm definitely not gonna take your job, bro. <laughs> It's okay. He would even laugh, but he, would, he was nervous. <laughs> That's my homeboy, though. Um, yeah, it was funny. We, we actually went out to dinner recently. Got totally smashed. Anyway, yeah, I hope that answered your question. Hello, my name is Charles. Hi, Charles. Okay, so um, some of the characters that you voice also sing. Are you a singer? Like, do you have a small indie band? Uh, I mean, I was all state chorus in Jersey. 1986. But instead of participating, I went on a ski trip to Vermont. <laughs> nice. 
Uh, no, I've, I, I've done my share of musicals and, uh, and, and sang in chorus and, and, and that kind of stuff. And yeah, when I get approached to sing a song, I, I love it. Aquaman was just such a boisterous Broadway show actor, you know. It, you know, that, that was, you know, who are you? Are you a man or a superman? A man with a plan. I can't remember the lyrics. It's fucking, but you know, you get you get the opportunity to sing songs like that. You know, it's it's always fun. Um, you put it to use. You have a good time. You know. I mean, baking pancakes, making baking pancakes. I mean, I mean, I don't know how many times I've sung that song, crying out loud. I still love it, but boy, oh boy. But yeah, you know, I, I put it to use. Um, luckily, you know, and I, I have fond memories of all the all the songs I get to sing. It's great, but don't make me sing a Christmas song. It'll make me cry. I don't know what they. they I don't know why. Even the goofiest, happiest Christmas song, I'm like, <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's finish up this side of the room. There you go. Hi, John. Hi. I'm how Edwin. are you? Um, this is sort of a two-part question. Okay. But I'm curious that in your downtime now or in the past. Do you like to read comic books? And if so, which one or ones are your favorite? Well, the, 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 the Marvel team-ups, that was when I was young. They, they had a whole bunch of them. But the, the, the SNL cast was pretty cool, not ready for primetime players. Um, but I also liked Mouse. Ah. I liked um, the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was really cool. Um, but like not, not that much more. Um, but more graphic, more graphic stuff kind of, you know, was, was shown to me, like, by friends. I remember, I remember one time, uh, a friend of mine, a, com a comic, very funny guy, his name is Greer Barnes. We used to, um, we used to hang out after all our comedy session, uh, comedy sets in New York and, and talk, talk about karate movies and, and, he had these anime films like Fist of the North Star would turn me on to that stuff. And I was just like, oh, my God, that's crazy. But, yeah, uh, I, I, I mean, I remember reading Mouse and being like, wow. And, and reading the original T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and being blown away. Okay. Uh, next question. Hello, John. My name Hi. is Andrew. Hi, Andrew. And I just wanted to say I, I really liked all the roles that you did over the years. Mojo Jojo from Powerpuff Girls. Oh, wow. Typhu, Wrath of the Tiger, yes. um, Dr. Dracula from Kim Possible. Mm, Kim Possible, I'll get you. <laughs> where'd she go? Where did she go? Go. She go. She's not here. Where'd she go? Go. She go. <laughs> that's, uh, that's just uh, my, um, oh, God. What's my man's name from uh, Harvey Corman? It's me just channeling Harvey Corman from The Carol Burnett Show. <laughs> Ridiculous. Anyway. And last but not least, Uka Uka from the Crash Bandicoot Sure, series. absolutely, yes. So this is my quick two-part question. So of all the, most of those roles I mentioned, like Dr. Draken, what was the inspiration you found when you were creating the voices of each of the characters that you voice? And my second question is, when doing the character of Uka Uka, did you actually watch or play the original Crash Bandicoot games when taking on the Uka Uka No, role? I did not. I'll answer that question first, because this is a two-parter. No, I did not. I never played the game. So I came in and it was just like, oh, we need to do this deep pitch guy. And I did it and they were just like, that sounds great, boom. And we recorded it and it's done. So it was just a one and done. And then, um, I th no, I tell you, Dr. Draken like, was, was really me channeling Harvey Korman at, uh, as um, you know, uh, Headley Lamar in uh, Blazing Saddles. <clears throat> and just you know, having so much fun doing it. And speaking of like, you know, musical roles, you know, now go do that voodoo that you do so well, you know. Um, like he, you know, you provincial pups. Um, but yeah, like, you know, the, 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 I, I would, would do that. And then, you know, you have people to play off of in the room. And so it's just boom, it just explodes. But that was that, that was that. And the, all the, the other ones were just like, okay, we're gonna just, John, we need something like this. Is this okay? And then, yeah, sure, boom. And we just record it, we just do it. So a lot of the things you think maybe are really purely organic are just like real quick choices we had to make. Okay, we need something sounds like this, sounds like this. Eh, eh, can you do that? Here it is. Great. Boom. Next. So, 
Yep. Got to make the choices fast. Yeah. So. Okay. We have right. about nine minutes left. Let's try and get through these questions. John, are you headed back to your booth to sign or a photo op? You don't know quite sure? I'm going to go take a dump first. Okay. Then I'm going to go. Well, now you know your schedule. <laughs> at least you're regular. Sorry. Next question. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I couldn't help myself. That's the dumbest fucking joke. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I apologize to you. Seriously. Seriously, Western Pennsylvania, all of you, I owe you an apology. So all go right. ahead. Here I'm we sorry. go. Hi, John. How did you feel about uh, Futurama ending in, like, 2013? I hated it. It's, yeah, listen, you know, you get a, you get a paycheck cut off. That's a mother right there. <laughs> no, I, I uh, it was, uh, it was tough. I couldn't watch this, I couldn't watch the episode, the final episode. You know, I'd seen some of it in post, but I couldn't watch the final episode for a couple of weeks. And then, and then I was like, oh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to worry about it. And then, you know, it came back. Yay. Okay, next question. Um, so we actually started watching the show now that it's come back. And I think the credits had the top billing change from episode to episode. Was that a thing that was arranged in the union? I'm not really a lot allowed to talk about that. But think what you will. <laughs> Next question right here. Yeah. Hi, I'm Milo. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you enjoyed your more serious roles like the Joker or if you preferred doing your comedic stuff like Bender and I Zog. love playing all of it, but that doing the Joker was an opportunity that, no, that I had, hadn't had before to play that deepest, you know, a serious. It was a serious part. Um, a, lot of go, lot, a, a lot going on there. And... And I wasn't the, the original choice. The original choice didn't work out, and they, they replaced him with me, which was pretty wild. Um, and so, yeah, just, yeah, it was, it, it, that was a really heavy duty part. And um, I like playing that stuff. I like playing any, anything. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's, it, it, yeah that, that was, a, that was a, a big difference. When you're going for, when you're trying to, you know, scare the shit out of somebody as opposed to making them laugh, it's a completely different approach. So, yeah. And last question. And the faded rock and roll Jake the dog shirt. You might as well tie dye that thing now, man. Right. That thing uh, is worn out. You have, did you sleep in it last night? What the hell happened, man? Maybe. Uh, hi, I'm Nate. Um, how you doing, I, Nate? I have a two parter. Sure. I was curious how you got into voice acting and if you had any tips for any aspiring voice actors. Ah, the question. Um, I kind of fell into the voice acting thing. Uh, I was doing, I was, I was doing stand-up comedy in New York, do, doing it successfully in the, in the 90s. Um, and I was in a comedy team. I came up with Dave Chappelle, Dave Attell, all those guys. I mean, I remember when, you know, when, uh, uh, um, Jesus, uh, Brennan, what's my man's name? Uh, Neil, thank you so much. I keep thinking of his brother, Kevin. Um, when Neil Brennan was working the door at the comedy club, I used to headline at like crazy, like just insane. Um, you know, and, uh, I started to, I had a friend of mine that did voiceover for commercials and stuff like that. And I was like, ah, oh, man, I might like to get into that. And I started working with a new manager at the time. And she brought me up to this voiceover agent in New York, and, and he was like, oh, that guy in the comedy team? Hell yeah, we need him. We need a guy like him. Perfect. And I started, I booked my first audition. It was a Toyota radio ad. And I just started booking stuff left and right. I was doing well. Um, and then when I moved, I booked a, a television show called Chicago Hope. Remember Chicago Hope? It was like CBS, like there, it was their ER. It was, you know, but for like, you know, old people. <laughs> I played this, I played this new character. He was, uh, he was an intern. And I got to be out in Los Angeles for like, a, I did 11 episodes. So I, that was what brought me out there. And while I was out there, you know, I would go out for a voiceover auditions, but they, were, they started to be mostly animation and I mean there was commercial stuff but there was a lot of animation and video game stuff so I kind of fell into it um, but 
Futurama happened because I auditioned for um, Mad TV. I got it, and my agent and my manager at the time told me to not do it because the, the, the contract was garbage. And if you ask anybody who's on Mad TV, their contract was garbage, just garbage. It did, notoriously known for a garbage contract. Couldn't do any other shows. You were just locked in. You, just terrible. Really, really, really strict contract. And they were like, don't do it. All right, well, the same people that cast that show cast Futurama. And that, here it is right in the door. So, so yeah. So, yeah. Did I answer the question? I can't even yeah. remember. I just start rambling. Boy, oh boy. I'm my mother's son. God. <laughs> Maxine can yap. Anyway, I think I answered your yeah. question. Did I get yeah. it pretty much? Sure. Is there anything else you need to know? Make it a three-parter? Screw it. We got a minute. Any tips? Any tips. Any tips. Tips. <laughs> tips. This is the tips. This is the thing. All right. There's a website, a, a, a blog called IWantToViaVoiceActor.com. I want to be a voice actor.com all together. Uh, D. Bradley Baker is the guy behind it who is a wonderful, wonderful human being and also a wonderfully talented voice actor. Um, <clears throat> he steals my movie, uh, I Know That Voice, by the way. He, he does this thing where he does this creature voice. It's the weirdest thing you've ever seen. But watch, watch my movie, you get some tips there. Um, but also, I want to be a voice actor.com. I swear to God, he's, he has the most patient approach to so many FAQs about the business. And just, yeah, the, I, the, yeah, hands down that. And if you're an actor, if you're a young actor trying to make it and you're just trying to work and you're trying to start out, just make rent. If you can make rent, you can take care of yourself. Everything else is gravy. Get that job, that, that bullshit job that you're just working and make, make rent. Make that rent. And then just keep your creative juices flowing. Perform in shows and, you know, at night. Join a theater company. Do, do, do whatever. Get, get it out. But, but if you can make rent and make things happen for yourself, that's it. Mm -hmm. So there you go. And there you and, go. And learn how to, say, learn how to not take no personally. You're going to hear it 10,000 times in your lifetime as an actor. No. Don't take a breath. Thank you very much. See you later. All right. No. Okay, cool. No, that's not what we're looking for. All right, cool. Walk away. Don't go, oh, God, he doesn't like me. No, don't, don't, don't. That does, that's, you're not right for the job. So what? Next. Move along. It's a numbers game. Smart, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for hey. your time and all the words of wisdom. John I'll DiMaggio! I'll, I'll see you over at the table. See guys. him at the table. Give it up. You can do better than I, that. I appreciate it. No, thank you, guys. Come hey, on. And sorry, sorry, kids, about the fucking language. I apologize. <laughs> I'm from New Jersey. Have you heard the Jersey alphabet? Fucking A, fucking B, fucking C. I appreciate you guys. I'll see you out there. Good news, everyone. You can subscribe to Fandom Spotlight for free. What? That doesn't seem right. And this says have fun and follow your fandom. Whatever that means. <laughs>